the prospect of GE Trees and the corporations that are pushing this technology is it's really breathtaking. I mean, they're looking at 184 million acres of forests around the world. So their dream is to cut down all those forests. Down go all the forests, up come these tree factories, millions and millions of acres, these monocultures, whether they're going to be eucalyptus or poplar. That's their dream. That's going to be all these trees that they're then going to cut down and plant every couple of years for fuel. Atrazine can travel over a thousand miles. So atrazine goes up on dust, it travels in the clouds, it comes down in the rainwater and the snow. It's been shown in Europe and in the U.S. that it can travel at least a thousand miles. A half million pounds of atrazine reportedly come down in the rainwater in the United States every year. But the second biggest use for atrazine in the U.S. is in forestry. So when the, when the trees are cut, my understanding is the atrazine is then applied aerially to prevent any weeds or competition from growing up while they replant the trees. Atrazine is associated or correlated with a number of reproductive health problems in humans. So for example, it's associated with low sperm count. It's associated with an increase in breast cancer. It's associated with an increase in prostate cancer. It's associated with at least three birth defects. The pollen blowing on the wind that we breathe, certainly the inhalation route is just as powerful as consuming. So when you burn wood um, per unit of energy generation, you actually release more carbon into the atmosphere than you would if you were burning coal. You know, I used to work for the federal government. I was an attorney for the USDA. And I believe that the proper role of the government is to protect the public, to protect our health and safety, to um, protect the environment. What's going on now at the federal government is, is that the private industry has been able to take over the regulatory system. And so government has basically abdicated its role in protecting the public health. Should the public be notified about something as incredibly serious as genetically engineered forests? Absolutely. You know, the forests do not need agriculture. So it's not symbiotic, but agriculture needs the forests. So this idea of cutting down all the forests, getting rid of all those pollinators, all those insects, all those birds, all that life that we need to help us in our agriculture, it is not only disastrous for our situation with, with climate change and climate disruption, it's actually a disaster for our food security. So these are the kind of things we have to pay attention to long before, long before we release anything that has genetically engineered pollen. Because once you release it, everyone in the environment, everyone in the area is going to be affected, especially those that are highly sensitive.